Okay, welcome back to Corner Cupboard, and we are going to do a different method of dyeing some wool. Here on the counter, I have some Lincoln White Yearling Wool. It has been freshly washed. It is actually still wet from the washing. So we're going to set the camera down. First off, this is pulled apart. You can do this pretty easy because when it's wet, you do want to separate the fiber just a bit. And down at the underneath is plastic wrap. And use plastic wrap because you can microwave plastic wrap because we are going to use the microwave. So we're going to lay this out and get all this spread out and pulled apart. Now most people hand paint their yarn after it has been spun into a yarn, that's fine. Or they do it in roving, which is fine. Um, I like to cheat and get it all done at one time. So I kind of see no reason to let it all dry and then get it all wet again. So I have to wait twice as long to get my wool spun into a yarn. Um, now a lot of people use food coloring, some use Kool-Aid. Um, today we are going to use RIT dye. Now RIT dye is at your local grocery store, Walmart, Kmart, wherever. Um, RIT liquid dye runs about $2.25 a bottle and you can get a lot of dye coloring out of a bottle of RIT dye. Most people um, don't have an uh, allergy to it because it is used on clothing and so if you have dyed your clothes and you're okay with it, then you should be okay with this. We are using aquamarine, kelly green, and just a little bit of black. So, um, to get everything started, each cup of RIT dye has basically two tablespoons of vinegar in the cup of water. Vinegar is the chemical that makes the color stick to the wool. So... What we're going to start with, I think we're going to start with this real light green. Now most people use a medicine dropper if you're doing yarn. If you have spun your yarn and you want to color that, I would suggest you get a medicine dropper so you can have more control. Um, because I'm doing um, unspun, it, it's not, it's, this is fresh out of the sink. So because we're doing it raw, I'm just going to use a spoon because I get a big old variant of color in it. So we're going to start probably down here in the middle. And I'm going to just start dribbling this in. Just like this. Because I want this to go wherever it's going to go. And thank goodness for plastic wrap because you want to keep your boards and your countertops nice and clean. If you have granite countertops, you won't have a problem. If you have wood or laminate countertops, um, yeah, you might want to cover that up. Because RIT dye will stain laminate countertops. So we're just going to dribble this in. So we're going to change from that color. And we're going to bring in some blue. Like this. That's a pretty blue. And we're going to dribble this all over. Now the underside is going to be darker because that's where the color is going to sit. So the top is not going to look very interesting until we start smashing it down. Now, I'm not done coloring. But here's what I want to show you what to do with it. Whether you're using a spoon, whether you're using a syringe, whatever you're using, you need to mash the wool down to get the color. Now, if you don't want any white left over, then you want to make sure, keep a check on the bottom, and make sure that this has covered all your white. I don't mind white because it's a nice little throw in the color. <laughs> It's a nice little pinch in there, you know, especially if you have all kinds of reds and yellows and greens in there. And then all of a sudden, whoop, there's a little piece of white in there. So we're going to go ahead and get this all finished. Get this done. And we're going to finish with our colors. 
and then when that's done I will come back and show you what to do with it after you're done.